I'm Will, and I'm from uh, Virginia. And um, yeah, I just wanted to call and talk about Ukraine for a second, maybe degrowth if there's enough time. Um, but uh, I, I guess um, the thing that I wanted to say mostly is that uh, Russia has been very good at propaganda historically, and I think that bleeds a lot into how people on the left see Ukraine because there's there's a broad narrative they've been very successful at crafting, which is that Russia never did any colonialism where our hands are entirely clean, where, you know, sort of... Uh, uh, we support all leftists around the world and we're anti-imperialist and it's like um no that's not what the history says and it's especially relevant in ukraine and how the whole thing works out because see R russia did a lot of settler colonialism and the soviets themselves did a lot of settler colonialism because basically everything on the other side of the urals belongs to native siberians and and or native americans if you count alaska so you know the the russian empire did all of the same things as all the other european empires they just did it in central asia and in the caucasus and in siberia and also in the united states of america i mean that's how we got alaska and it's important to understand in ukraine especially because they also did the same things with to their you know quote unquote slavic brothers and there's a long history of russian settler colonialism in ukraine and also in the baltic especially in the soviet period and it's important to understand in the context of crimea especially because see both the russian empire and the soviet union ethnically cleanse the native crimean tatars and so you know when we're talking about the referendums that they hold where they say you know oh there are all these russians and they want to be part of russia it's like no those are the settlers that land doesn't belong to them it's not really their right to say we you know it's not their right to say we're going to take this land from the tatars and give it to russia and have them under russian control and you see now that the that Crimea is under Russian control. The Tatars are facing repression from, you know, this Russian fascist violence again, because obviously the Tatars don't want to live as second class citizens mm -hmm. on their own land. So it's important to understand that, like, really, this is a colonial conflict. It's, it, it is an imperial conflict in between the United States Empire and the Russian Empire, but at the same time, the people who live there do actually retain, you know, their, their own agency, as in they don't want to be part of the Russian Empire anymore. They, the, the Ukrainians, the Tatars, they want out. But the, Russian and, but the Russians and, you know, the Russian settlers who still follow that mindset, who are, you know, concentrated in the East, they, you know, they're going along with that program to some extent. And I just think it's important to keep that in mind in terms of Russia is not blameless in any of this. This is you know, centuries of oppression that's kind of coming to a head here. And so, it, I, yeah, I, I mean, I think ethically, I, yeah, I, I mean, I think I think and, 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 and we've talked in the past on this uh, program, I mean, just in, in terms of like uh, the, the famine in the early 30s, that was essentially man made by uh, the Soviets uh, relative to Ukraine. Yep. And, um, and uh, yes, there is a history here. And I do think that in terms of there there but there there are two sort of distinct issues in my mind that are going on here one is how you assess the conflict between uh russia and ukraine and in my mind there is like there is no doubt that you have an imperialist invasion of a of a country there's also obviously the history you're talking about and um there's no there's absolutely no justification for what russia has done there is a there is a second question as to in my mind like what 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 
role does the United States play in this? And I think um, I, I think it, it it is very difficult to argue that the United States should not be helping this country that has been invaded. Um, but those are those are distinct issues in my mind. Um, one, you know, who is at fault, and you know who uh, uh, as a as just a and, and who started the war i mean that that is one issue and i i just i think that sometimes there are people on the left and i don't know in other quarters who conflate those two things right like you can believe in my mind that um you can believe that uh uh that russia is the um is 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 totally in the wrong here i don't know how to sort of like you know uh and and i believe simultaneously um have questions as to what role the united states should play okay those to me are two distinct things because um you know as i've explained uh, uh ad nauseum you know there have been instances in the past where ostensibly the united states is doing um is is attempting to do something good and and, and forget about intent right i mean uh, yeah. I, I you know that that to me is largely I- I- irrelevant you, you can be they can be doing it for you can do good things even for cynical reasons let's put it that way um yep. the question is you know like what um what you know, what should the united states do i don't think you find a lot of people who say we should be sending troops there like i think i think yeah, no. i think most people would argue that we should not be doing that even those who are fully fully supportive of ukraine now maybe there are some who say that we should be putting troops in there but i don't think so so it, it's clearly a debate as to what the united states what role the united states should play or what role nato should play et cetera, et cetera. and the question is is like you know where do people draw the line i think most people draw the line definitely at no troops go in there and then the question is like okay how much uh funding how much weapons what conditions do we put on those weapons we do you know we send weapons and we say these cannot be used to strike with inside of russia um we there's two stories out of the past couple of days in terms of uh, out of the washington post one is that uh jake sullivan who's the uh, national security advisor to the president has been in talks with his russian counterpart about trying to make sure that this uh conflict does not go nuclear literally um and then yeah. there, there's another story out there that the biden administration has been saying to um uh, Zelensky, you need to publicly at least publicly um uh show that you are dis- uh, dip- uh disposed to having negotiations it, the 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 reporting says explicitly the united states is not pushing them into uh, negotiations but rather it is saying you must do this publicly because of pressure that is building amongst other allies and other countries that are feeling the sort of knock-on impact of the war and i don't know where that goes um but uh you know, so, yeah, there are people on the left, but I think a lot of them are campists, to be honest with you. And it might just be yeah. overrepresented in terms of louder voices on media than it is reflective of general life. But, you know, I understand what you're trying to say is that, you know, do you do you actually I feel like the imperialist kind of designation for what Russia is doing is enough to to grasp the scope of it. But I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I, I just I just think it's important in terms of like especially in the English speaking world since you know obviously every time somebody shows up and they they do imperialism then the people speak that language so a lot of the information would be in Russian and you know it's harder to access people in sort of that sphere of influence in the former Russian Empire and so I just feel like especially in the English speaking world, there's not a lot of recognition of um, the fact that 
Russia isn't really any different than France. You, you know, it, 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 there, there's there's still sort of this like aura of, of like goodness that they have, and I'm just I I want to push back on that a little bit because it's I mean it's just a general thing that sort of exists. Like it's not uncommon to find people who sort of have this view that Russia is blameless. Like there, there was a meme going around or something about like, I don't see any Russian flags on Africa in, you know, colonies. And it's like, well, that's because Russia colonized places right next to it. Right. Not right, because right, right, they didn't right, do right, colonialism. Right. 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 <laughs> Just, right, right, right. So I, I think it's important yeah. to point that out. Yeah. I think that's a very good point. Uh, that's a very good point. I appreciate the call. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Uh, I think it's a very good point. There's a certain, like, uh, chauvinism that uh, has, you know, uh, there's a Western chauvinism associated with that. <laughs> we don't take it seriously, the countries that they had colonized. I mean, I think, too, there's obviously the left has, um, you know, vestiges of sympathy from at least, you know, ostensibly what was uh, the idealized version of what the Soviet Union, you know, theoretically could have been i just but the reason that the the left focuses on the imperialism of like and the carving up of africa for example by like say western powers is because it was it's directly correlated with chattel slavery and like also how capitalism forms and and colonialism in like it is intrinsic to that i don't know i mean I hear I hear what the caller is saying. I don't necessarily know if it's one to one. I think but. it's risky from a Western perspective to bring up settler colonialism. <laughs> like I don't think it's the. It, I think it's useful, but it also like it invites to ask like, well, like what about you guys? I, I just think like you can talk about these things like you shouldn't invade other countries, rather than say like. Right. Well, I think I think he's calling as a as a critic of both. <laughs> I don't think I think I don't think he's saying like yeah, he's saying yeah no also and the United States but right, right. there's a United States and a, uh, I think that's what's going on there. That's my sense without speaking for him.